Hello friends and welcome to a lecture on operation research. Today we will be discussing about replacement models. So we take up the first replacement model that is a replacement model that ignores the time value of money. This is Professor Arvind Prasad. Now why do we require replacements on the first place? We of course require replacement of any machinery, even human beings for that matter. Because there is a wear and tear, okay. but for human beings of course in any organization it would be disability, debt and they need to be replaced. That is an unfortunate situation but yes. So with machines, yes there is a wear and as they wear the maintenance cost increases. Then we need to replace them and generally in our daily lives we do it whenever we are not happy with the maintenance cost of any equipment that is a mixer or a television or anything that is in your house, we replace it. Second is replacement due to sudden failures. Now whenever there is a failure and you can no longer use the equipment, you have to replace it. You are left with no options because that equipment or whatever you are using is a daily part of your life. So it needs a replacement. But when it comes to organizations, we have to have a policy. So what can be the replacement policies and why do we have to have replacement policies? The first idea is you have to have a replacement policy because, well, to reduce the cost of ownership, well, if you are owning anything and it is giving service, adding value to your organization, then if its ownership cost increases, that is because of frequent breakdowns or frequent maintenance, if its ownership uh, cost increases, then you may have to replace it. Now you have to have a policy whether these costs justify a replacement or they justify a retention. Now there could be sudden failures of equipments and that could be critical because with sudden failure, you may have a problem that is just not available and your important work gets held up. In this case, you need to have a periodic replacement or a periodic maintenance policy where you know what is going to be the mean time of failure and you take corrective actions of either getting it repaired, that is you may do a preventive maintenance or either having it replaced. So sudden failures, studying sudden failures and the probability of sudden failures, they do give you an idea of what periodic maintenance policies that you need to make. Now let's have a look at what are the types of failures. There are two types of failures. One is gradual and one is sudden. Now in sudden failures, you have three kinds. One is progressive, where as you keep using the equipment, the chances of failure go up, that the probability of failure goes up. And this is very true with automobiles. That is, as you keep using your car or your bike for a longer time, the chances of failure, sudden failure of any component would go up. The second kind of failure is retrogressive failure. Now in retrogressive failure, the chances of failure during the initial period are high. But once the initial period has been covered or you are over the initial period, the chances of failure drastically reduce. That is they do not increase with time. Now this is especially true in today's world with electronic goods. I am not saying that they are not equally true with other goods, but with electronic goods, yes. Because companies, electronic companies especially, the well-known ones like Casio or other companies or Sony for that matter, they invest a lot on reliability of the product. That is, the components should not fail. Now, if by a bad luck or a luck by chance, when your television or your calculator is being manufactured and the component that could fail comes into it, 
Now, the failure is usually during the initial use. But if you have got all the components which have a very high reliability and they have passed the reliability test, then the failure is not going to happen. So, whatever failures happen, they happen initially. That is why you will usually see in these companies that or electronic products that are being sold, a one year guarantee is given and that suffices. All of us know that that suffices. If there is going to happen any failure, it's going to happen in the first year. Later on, most of us do not uh, purchase any AMCs for electronic equipment. The third kind of failure is random failure. Now, this random failure is very popular in electric bulbs, especially the old electric bulbs which used to have the tungsten filament. If you remember or if you have seen such bulbs. Now, here it was, it's completely random. It may last, it may fail early, it may fail late. It all depends on a various factors on how the, how the filament survives over a period. Now, let's learn a few terms. Let C be the capital cost of the equipment. Let S be its salvage value, sorry. Let N be the duration of use. Now, this is usually in years. It can be taken in months. But nevertheless, months or years, the duration of use should really suffice to solve a problem. And then you have the running cost in any year, R in brackets T. Now, T could be 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, that 1, 2, 3, 4 would be referring to year 1, year 2, year 3 or year 4. So, it is the running cost in of the equipment in a particular year. Now, what do we have? That the average total cost of owning the equipment is 1 over n c minus s summation from 0 to n rt. Now, this is the average total cost that you are going to have if the equipment has run for n years or n months. Remember in this formula, time is a discrete value. Now, what are the policies you can make if you have such kind of a analysis of average total cost? The policy is usually if the running cost in the subsequent year, that is if you take year n and you calculate the annual uh, average total cost of that year, if the next year running maintenance okay, okay, or the running cost is going to be higher than the average total cost, then you need to replace it. So let's take up a problem. A firm is considering the replacement of a machine whose cost price is rupees 12,200 and its scrap value is rupees 200. Okay, scrap value is also known as the salvage value. It is the value which you get after the machine has come to its end and you have to sell it off, of course, to get some value out of it. From experience, the running, that is the maintenance of the operating cost, which include the running cost, are found to be as follows. As you can see here, it's on your table, year 1 and the running cost. So, year 1 is 200, year 5 is 1800 and year 8 is 4000 rupees. When should the machine be replaced? Now, we make a table of this kind where on the first column, we have the years of service. Then in the next column, we write the running cost for the year. And then in the next column after that, you have cumulative running cost, right? So, the running cost for every year is 200. That is the first year is 200, second year is 500, third year is 800. And in the cumulative cost, of course, it's going to be the sum of three, which is going to be 1500. Now, from this, what you do is you go to the fourth column. In the fourth column, what you do is you calculate C minus L. That is the capital cost minus the salvage value. Now, the capital cost in this problem was 12,200 rupees and the salvage value was 200 rupees. So, C minus S 
is 12,000 rupees. Now you calculate the total cost for each year. That is the depreciation cost plus the cumulative running cost. And you have the values in column number 5. And in column number 6, of course, you get the value by dividing the values in column number 5 with the years in service. So, in the first year, it's 12,200 divided by 1. That makes it 12,200 only. In the second year, it is 12,700. Now, 12,700 divided by 2 makes it 6,350. In the third year, it is 13,500. That divided by 3 makes it 4,500 rupees, so on. Now, what do we find in the last column, which is that of the average total cost? We find that there is a minima in year number 6. Also, what do we find is that the running cost in year number 7 is higher than the average total cost in year number 6. Now, what is the policy we had said? The policy is if the running cost is greater than in the subsequent year is greater than the average total cost in a year, then we need to replace it. Therefore, in the year 6, that is the in the end of the year 6, the machine should be replaced. So, there we are. We should be replacing it. Considering all the factors, we should be replacing it in year number 6. So, this was a very short lecture on replacement policy without time value of money. Hope you have enjoyed it. And if you like this lecture, do share the link with other of your classmates or other of your colleagues who would be interested in this lecture. Yes, do like and subscribe this channel. That is very important to me because it motivates me to make such videos which are, of course, informative to all. This is Professor Arvind Prasad signing out. Have a great day. Have a great time. Good evening.